All right. Rotate your phone. Phone is rotated. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Now, now we're cooking. Hi, world. It's your boy, Matt Danger here. And I'm gonna show you how to take this and make it into a pizza. Because that's what we do in this kitchen. We make it into pizza. I'm also gonna be getting drunk on Maker's Whiskey. Because that's what I've got. And all my olive juice is gone, so I can't make any more martinis. So we're gonna get started with the most, arguably the most important part of this whole operation. I'll be right back. I'm gonna get the uh, martini glass. This looks clean enough. Is it clean? No. But it, technically it is clean enough if it's washed with water, right? So, there we go. Am I out of paper towels? I am out of paper towels. So, I don't know what's happening right now. I don't know where all my paper towels have gone. But, oh, there they are. They're on the other side of the kitchen. Okay. There we go. Cup clean. Now you guys, I see Dom is washing, and I think Dom is gonna appreciate this part. Because this is really, this is the magic part right here. This is the part that Dom is gonna go, whoa! Whoa! I expect that out of you, Dom. Because guess what? I'm gonna show you what to do when you don't have uh, one of them fancy shaky boys that the bartenders all got. I'm gonna teach you a, a world lesson right here. Um, do I have any more olive juice? I mean, I had like a little bit of olive juice. I feel like there was more olive juice in there. Oh, there it is. <laughs> I do have a little bit more. Oh. I don't think, I don't know if we can use it for, I don't think it's enough for a martini. Let's do it. So goodbye makers, we'll get back to you later. We're going to start, we're going to do the hard stuff is what we're going to do. All right. I know you can't see what I'm doing right now. Just pretend I'm right there in front of the camera. Pretend I'm looking good and doing cool stuff. All right, I'm back. Okay, now I'm going to go full, put more ice in this cup. So pretend I'm still looking good and doing cool stuff for one more second. I know you're, you guys are wondering, hey, is this guy, is this guy here ever going to teach me how to make a pizza? Throw some protein into the mixed drink. No, no, that's insane. I'm trying to teach these guys. Oh my God, I'm almost out of gin. How is that even possible? All right, here we go. That's all I got left. I don't even think that's enough for a real martini. All right, I'm gonna show you. Mason jar, mason jar martini. You done, tighten it up. Oh, you give it a shake. Oh yeah. Oh, we're shaking it. And she was shaking. Oh, oh, oh! I can't. My voice is still a little sore. I got like a sore throat. I think it was from yelling at the neighbors for looking at me. That's not what happened. I just, that was the first thing that came to my mind for a fake reason for a sore throat. All right, here we go. Okay, we got a pretty good amount of uh, gin. All right, just enough. Just enough, I think. Let's taste it. Yep, that's gin. It is a little bit watered down because I didn't clean, I didn't dry the, the glass out entirely, but that's okay. You know why? Because sometimes wife gives you lemons. And when you get a lemon, you know what you have to do? You have to roll with the punches to get to what's real. All my gin is gone now. All my gin is gone and it is very depressing me. Look at that, no more gin. What is, what is this world even coming to? Okay, we've got our gin. We've got our ice. We've got our olives. I'm gonna use the strainer from the jar and I wanna put the olive juice into that. Look at that, oh boy. All right, we got just enough for like a kind of dirty martini, but you guys know, if you know Matt Danger, which I'm assuming the people who are watching this do, you guys know I need a dirty martini and I got just a little bit more olive juice than this guy. This is the last martini I can make right now. Oh, there's just a couple of drops. Oh, man. Well, you know what they say. All of you. <laughs> exactly, Aaron. All of you. I love ya. <laughs> All of ya. 
All right, hold on. I'm getting the toothpicks. Now we're gonna, oh yeah. These are the blue cheese olives too. So at least, even though I don't have as much olive juice as I normally have in this, I'll have a couple of olives. Hey, get out here. Now I know why the bartenders hate making me these drinks because they don't get these olives. These olives are hard to get. So hold on, I'm getting the olives. We're getting them. Okay, I got two. You know what we're gonna do? In an unprecedented move, we're gonna take a second toothpick in a stunning turn of events and we're gonna toothpick both of them with a second toothpick and now we're gonna have four olives in one drink and two toothpicks because that's just how I like to roll. Erin. Erin's got the best one-liners. She should be a comedian. I don't know why she isn't. You gotta start your stand-up career, girl. All right, here we go. Almost done. Now, anybody who knows martinis knows you need a little bit, just a little, little, de a little, tss, just a little, tss, a little tss of some of this. Ah, oh, for me, just a, just a little bit. I think I put too much. As a matter of fact, I can't remember where, but one bar I know just keeps it in a little spray, a sprayer, and they just tss, tss, put a little spray in. And that, my friends, is a dirty martini when you're almost out of olive juice and you have dry vermouth in the fridge. And now we're going to get to the good stuff, the pizza. First things first, open up the oven. You guys can see the oven. Do you see the stone in there? I got, I done, we went and done and got out a pizza stone yesterday. Now I have a pizza stone. Now I made this without a pizza stone just using this yesterday. And it was real, real, real good. It just wasn't quite as, as crispy as I would prefer. So we're gonna use this this time. Now I'm gonna move this over so you can see me really work this dough. Cause we gotta work, work the dough. Okay, here we go. We've got our, our tabletop. Did I clean, you're asking yourself, Matt, Matt Danger, did you clean this tabletop off before you put all this flour down so that you're gonna get all your dough and bare hands and stuff all over it? Of course I didn't do that. That's not how we do things here. All right. There we go, look at this, look at this. Nice and floured, nice and floured, just like my hands. I also need my rolling pin, which I forgot that I needed until right now. There it is. Okay, we've got our rolling pin. Now this dough has been proofing for a day because I made some yesterday and I got an extra one. All right, let's see if we can get it out of the bag. Oh, it came out of the bag just like that. Nice and easy. Now this dough was made with red flour, it was made with Dale, uh, actually, that the yeast I have in the fridge has been done, got a, dude's got a piece of stuff. Fucking, uh, uh, the, what was I saying? I was saying something important about something. Uh, here's the dough. Something about something important. Okay, it's not that important, I guess. All right, oh yes, the yeast I have in the fridge is like, two years old. I have it from my old apartment and it still proofs well. It's still fucking, it still bubbles up when you, when you put the, the hot water and the sugar in there. All right. So we're going to start working our dough now. We got to get this dough nice and worked. You know what I mean? It's got to get a workout just like me. So we're going to work. We're going to work it. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. We're going to roll this dough. We're rolling it. We're going to punch it a little bit. Oh, Alita knows. Alita knows what's up. The yeast. She saw the yeast. She was, she was with me yesterday making this pizza. She knows it's legit. All right, here we go. Keep making the, the dough. Oh, you're gonna work it. We gotta get that. We gotta get that gluten activated. All right. This is bread flour. It's got extra gluten. That means I don't know what it means, but I know there's gluten and it's extra. I need my drink too. So we're gonna take periodic drink breaks because that's just the kind of cooking show that this is. Mm. Mm. Ah, that's what I'm talking about. Y'all, new Rick and Morty on tonight. We're, uh, we're, we're having a good time tonight. Ugh, we're gonna elbow it. Mm. Really. Mm. 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 Work in your MMA skills if you got any. You gotta, gotta practice them skills and you just gotta really uh, bring that, that illegal 90 degree elbow from a upward angle. All right, now we're getting there. Now, again, we continue to knead. Now, they tell me kneading the dough is kind of like making love to a woman, except instead of a woman, it's dough, and instead of making love, you're kneading. 
I don't have sources to verify that, but. All right, this dough is starting to feel elastic. You see how it's got some, a little bit of mm, a little mm. It's returning nice and springy. Now we're, we've needed it. It's all needed. We don't need any more, but we're, <laughs> all right, we're gonna start rolling. And we're a rolling, and we're a rolling. We're gonna start rolling it out, and start to give this dough its shape. All right, it's gonna take a while. It's gonna take a while because all that gluten is now worked. Gluten's nice and, and worked. So it's going to be very glutinous. It's going to be glutey, glutey, just like glute, glutes, you know. Now we're going to stretch. Oh, yeah, we're going to just give it a little stretch. Give it a little manual stretching. You know what I mean? Well, if I was fancy, I'd try to do some shit like this. But then I'm going to get flour every, all over everything, and I don't want to clean that. Dirty martinis and dirty at pizzas starring Matt Danger. That's right. This is a dirty pizza. It knows what it did. It knows. <clears throat> This pizza is lucky because I just set up my bedroom restraints and it's not gonna, it can't fit into them. All right, but we're gonna keep working. We're gonna give this, this pizza a nice firm slap. Remind it that it's a bad pizza. It's not done anything good with its life. That's right. Bad pizza. Bad pizza. You should have been better. You should have been a doctor. Bad crust. You could have gone to law school, but what are you doing here? You're sitting in the kitchen drinking a martini. All right, continuing to work this dough. This is the fun part. This is the exciting part of the show. This is the part where you really feel like you're making a pizza. Everything else is just kind of easy. This is the part where you're like, whoa, I'm making pizza at home. I'm not ordering it from no Domino's. I ain't getting no DiGiorno. I ain't, okay, this is taking a while. It's gonna be, it takes a while, guys. You gotta be patient. Just like with making love to a lady. <laughs> gotta be patient. Patient is you guys do me a favor give this video a little share so your friends can enjoy some of this joy this pizza joy that I'm sharing with you or don't I don't I don't care I'm gonna eat pizza anyways so I'm winning regardless we're working we're still getting it now you can see oh oops you can see that the pizza is starting to, to look a little bit more like a pizza but we got to keep working we can't give it a break now. If we give it a break, it's going to know that it's won and that it's defeated us. And we can't let that happen. We need, I need more drinks first. Mm. Mm. This pizza needs to know who's the boss. We got to teach him, hey, listen, you might be a pizza, you might be delicious, but I'm the one who's in charge here. So we're work. Oh, you guys can't even see. It's like overexposed. Hold on. I'm trying to fix the lighting. Come on, Facebook. You should know better. There we go. There we go. I think I'm trying to get it so that the lighting is a little better for you guys. So right now it just looks like punching my countertop. All right. I think that's better. It's a little better. I don't know. We're still working this pizza. The point is the dough is forming. Now you can see we're starting to get more of a traditional pizza shape. It's nice and wide, nice and spread open, just like we want dough to be. Can't be, can't be um, a reserved dough here. We need it to be quite liberal with its tendencies to spread open. Um, there goes my female demographic, and I'm sorry about that. My apologies. You can cancel Matt Danger if you want on Twitter. Hashtag cancel Matt Danger. Okay, we're keeping keeping this dough going. All right, we're almost ready to move him over to the tray because he's his shape is formed. He's spread out where he needs to be. Now we can take our. Oh yeah! Now look at that. Do you see? Can you see? Can you see? Now he's real, real where we want him to be. Now we're really feeling like a pizza. Now dough is nice and pliable. It's starting to, to, to open to open up to us. It's going to start telling us its secrets soon. It's going to help us get through rough times. And more importantly, it will never leave us. Pizza will never leave. I just lost it when you mentioned a few people. <laughs> cancel, hashtag cancel Matt Danger. All right, we're ready. We're moving our tray over. We're going to take our pizza dough, whoosh, right onto the tray. Look at that, it's like a perfect fit, like a slipper and a glove. 
or like a stripper in a strip mall. All right, now we're just pulling the edges, pulling the edges a little bit. Now you might say, Matt Danger, why is there so much freaking flour on your pizza, dude? It's gonna be so floury. Listen, you know what a pizza dough is made out of? It's made out of flour, okay? I don't need to hear your negativity, number one. Number two, this is how it goes. Okay. So we're continuing. We're still making pizza. This pizza's being made. We're making it. Who's making it? We're making it. Now, the, you might be asking yourself, Matt Danger, what kind of pizza are we going to be making today? Since you want to talk so much shit and be such a pizza man. Well, I'll tell you what kind of pizza we're making. But first, I'm going to plug nothing. I don't have any sponsors, so I don't have to plug anything. That's the beauty of being unknown is that you don't have to pretend that you like something to and uh, but also someone sponsor me with something though please pizza sponsor me DiGiorno DiGiorno pizza I mean this isn't DiGiorno we made this crust by hand in a loving caring way just like I'm lovingly and caringly spreading it all over this pan spread it all over the pan squeeze it squeeze it all right now we're gonna start forming our crust now that this pizza is starting to take more form, we're going to start forming this nice, thick crust and keeping its form. Now, you might notice, hey, why is my pizza kind of not keeping its form? It's because it's a naughty pizza and it needs to be taught the lesson. So we spank the pizza and say, keep your form, pizza, come on. We keep going, forming this crust. Now. I didn't technically work the dough as long as I should have. I could have worked it for another few minutes. Martini time. Uh, uh. Another few minutes would have stretched out just a little bit more. I sponsor you with the bag of dicks. I'll take a bag of dicks right now. Right about now. That goes great with pizza. A bag of dicks. Just ask any girl watching Netflix. Want to come over for Netflix and chill and a bag of dicks? <laughs> yeah, again, Blake, there goes my female sponsorship or demographic. Sorry, ladies. Again, if you guys go to my Facebook page, you would have noticed I said I need to be single for a reason. And this is part of the reason. All right, we're keeping going. This pizza is coming along. All right, you can see not quite perfectly symmetrical. We'll work on it. All you have to do is just give a little pounding to the pieces that aren't behaving as we want. Okay, we can also take just a little bit of water to help it roll a little easier. Right on the, just the, the, right on, right on the tip of your finger. Just boop, 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 boop. And remember, a little goes a long way with this dough. A little goes a long way. And now look at that. Now we're cooking. Now we're cooking, folks. How are you guys doing? Blake's with me. Diego's watching. How you guys, what are you guys cooking tonight? You guys, you guys making anything fancy? I saw Diego do some Snapchat stories with his, um, I can't remember what it was. Stop that pizza, show it how. <clears throat> That's right, Diego. You gotta teach the pizza who's boss. Teach it, hey, I'm in charge. And if you notice some, hill, some holes forming in your pizza, you just grab a little bit off the, of the dough off the crust and you just stick it right right in that hole. And just like that, pizza's behaving again. All right, so we're almost there, folks. We're just gonna redistribute a little bit of this crust mast, mass, and make sure that our pizza is how shaped the way we want it to be. Now, y'all, I'm eating this by myself. I ain't serving it to no one. I don't need it to look perfect. I just want it to be delicious. And there we have it, our dough has been formed. Now, we get to the real exciting stuff, the toppings. Now, again, you might be wondering, Matt Danger, what kind of pizza are we making tonight here? And, you, and I, would, I would be inclined to tell you, hey, you shut up, because I'm going to show you. Check my snap and find out. Diego plugging his snap over here. Diego snap, I think it's just Diego Oliveri. Check it out, because I know he's making something good over there. All right, let's get some of our basil. We're going to take some of our fresh basil. All right. We're gonna take some of our beautiful, beautiful cover girl. Top. 
tomato. A beautiful fresh mozzarella. Blake cooked up some burgers, he's saying. Yeah. And now we're gonna show you where the magic happens. Now first I need a couple slices of garlic too. Because it can't be a margarita pizza without garlic. I mean, come on. The boy went back to Napoli because he missed the scenery. Oh, this this uh, is already sliced. I don't even have to slice it. Look. That makes things a little easier. All right. I'm going to show you how to break this garlic up easy. Just take your knife. Bam. Give it a little bam. And just like that, garlic is opened. Martini time. Thank you for reminding me, Diego. I needed that. Mm. You know, out of all the days I needed a martini, today is a good one. Like I was telling Diego earlier, I was... Ah, oh, there we go. Yes. Oh, oh my God. There's not really a better smell in the world than just freshly cut and sauteed garlic. Mm. Now, if I was being extra pro, y'all, I would saute this a little bit first. Throw it on a pan with some olive oil. Give it a good... Um, Give it a good minute or two just to saute, get some of that aromas flowing. I'm not doing that today, but you can if you got the time and the desire. All right, here we go. We got this, we got our mozzarella. We're gonna do our sauce first. Now I happen to have here a sauce from Alina. She gave me, it's a mazate, a mazate, pizza sauce. Now I did have some the other day. It did need some sugar but I'm not mixing in the sugar today. I'm just gonna go go for broke, see how it tastes on its own, let it stand up for itself. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes pizza sauces, you, you bathe them too much and they, they get, they get, um, they get too acclimated. They need to be, they need to be able to stand on their own. So now we're gonna take our spoon, circ, starting from the, circ, uh, the center, we're gonna spread this sauce out all the way up to the crust, right up to the crust, ah, and there we go. Now we've got our sauce spread out on this beautiful pizza. And now it's uh, garlic time. Garlic is going to get spread right in there, right in the sauce where it's going to get nice and heated up as the sauce starts to sizzle. Has to get some good. Sauteed onion. Oh, that is a good... Well, I mean, all the sauteed onions, you know, but I do all them sautés all the time. And I still say garlic is the best. All right. There we go. We've got that in there. Mm, beautiful. Cheese time. All right. We've got our fresh sliced mozzarella cheese. And I don't even have to do all the slicing because it comes pre-sliced. Now we're going to do what we call a rough cut here. We're not going to layer it to where it's all over everything. We're going to just slice it on roughly over the pizza as they do in Italy. In Italia. We're gonna leave some spaces for our tomato. That's good. So we're gonna mix our tomato right in with the cheese here. Mm, mm. It's, oh, it smells so good, guys. All right, I'm gonna save the rest of this cheese for another day, for another pizza, you know? Because even though this pizza might be good and it might be making me hungry again for dinner, sorry, Elida. Even though this pizza might be good and it might be a well, pizza that seems perfect for you, and it might be as good as a pizza can be, there's always another pizza, okay? So don't get hung up if this one, uh, uh, don't come up perfect, you know what I mean? Because sometimes that's just how the dough rolls. And put that on a lumber cooker and sell it. I'll tell you what. All right, guys, moving on to the beautiful Basil and tomato. Cut the butt sides off. Now, you want to be real fancy, you get yourself a nice artisan tomato, a nice beautiful golden yellow. This is one of them vine tomatoes. It's not bad, but it's not the best. Perfect. Just like that. We're going to take our tomatoes. Mix them in here with this cheese. 
Now, in theory, the heat from the oven should help dry out some of these tomatoes so they don't get too soggy, they don't keep the crust too soggy. So you want to make sure you're cooking your pizza at a high heat, at least 450 up to around 500 degrees if you have an oven that can go up that high. You want it hot, okay? You want it hot. I'll be right back, guys. I'm not running anywhere. Just uh, making sure I don't have a buttload of dishes to do later. All right. You might say, what is this cornstarch for, Matt Danger? This cornstarch is for lining your pan so that the pizza slides when you need it to. We're going to take a spatula, just go underneath to make sure nothing's sticking before we throw it on the pizza stone. But before that, we're going to do just a little light seasoning. We're going to do some crushed red pepper because, hey, listen, everything, and I mean everything, is better with a little pepper. All right, we need our basil. I'm going to remove the stems from our basil. Oh, looks like my basil needs more water, too, over there. Okay, we've got our stems off. We're just going to do a cut. I'm going to do half on now, and then the rest we'll throw on afterwards. So you want some fresh, some cooked. At least I like it that way. You don't like cooked basil? That's quite all right. I agree with you sometimes. Sometimes I just do it all after. But we're going to cut our topping basil a little finer. Golden. Next thing we need to do, and this is an important step people forget, we need to get our crust done, y'all. We can't just be having a dry ass crust over here. I happen to have this beautiful basting oil. This oil is flavored with all kinds of seasonings in it. But you can do the you can do the same thing. Just take some of your seasonings, throw it into some olive oil or some. Uh, I don't even know what kind of oil this is. I think it's um, saffron. I'm um, saffron. Uh, 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 I forget the name of it. I've had too many martini at this point, but that's okay. Now we're gonna take that right on this paper towel. If you have a brush, even better. But if you're like me, then we're just gonna pat our crust down. Patting it down, patting it down so every bite of that crust is full of flavor and not just a dry old crusty crust. You know what I mean? Because there's nothing worse than enjoying a pizza, you get to the crust and it's just got no flavor, no sauce, nothing. All right, so we're brushing, we're brushing, we're brushing. Brushing, 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 golden. All right, now we take our granulated garlic. And we, shh, shh, martini time. Mm. And we just gently, ever so gently, sprinkle the crust with garlic. And that is it, folks. That's how that pizza is ready. Now, one thing we want to do before we actually toss it in the oven and this is important. You want to throw it into the freezer for at least two or three minutes. Elijah said, keep making love to that pizza. That's going to help the pizza get off this pan, and it's also going to help the pizza keep its shape and cook even. So, I'd just like to throw it into the freezer for a couple minutes. In the meantime, while we're sitting here, I'll answer any of your guys' pizza-related questions. You might be asking me, Matt, Matt Danger, how do I take my pizza to the next level? I'll tell you right now, three things you can do. One, fresher ingredients. You get the best mozzarella, you get the best heirloom tomatoes that really, they really do make a difference. You get good, <laughs> American Dad is too appropriate for the seeds, that's right. You get fresh, organic basil, you get, um, you make the sauce yourself, uh, which is just really taking a tomato, you know, crushing it down, uh, cooking it and then you know getting those seasonings right you're gonna add sugar you're gonna add all of your Italian seasonings you're gonna add spice you're gonna add garlic you're gonna add a little bit of onion powder you know all that stuff make your sauce from, home, from scratch you'll be good but honestly the difference between a home-bought sauce and a homemade uh, homemade sauce and a store-bought sauce isn't so big on a pizza but it does it does take it does take it to another level other thing you can do is you can use a starter yeast which is a fermented yeast that's already got a very strong flavor profile that'll make your crust ele it'll elevate it to the next level besides making it this way which is just making it at home and also always use bread flour bread flour not regular flour bread flour has um, different properties than the regular flour it's got uh, I don't 
remember right now what's different about it. I just know that it does make a difference. It does make the pizza crust significantly, and I mean significantly, more, um, more crispy. Now that pizza is still in the freezer. We're going to leave it there for a couple of uh, minutes while we wait. I'm going to just tidy up this area a little bit. This is the part of the cooking shows where they always cut to commercial so you don't come back and see a guy just walking around. I could just carry this with me while I'm cleaning. How about that? Now you're watching me walk and make pizza. <laughs> now we still need these things here. But everything else here is gone, so we can save this. Actually, you know what? I'm going to take this. I like a little sauce in a cup so I can dip the crust into it. Because really, listen, guys, listen. That's the life we're living. You know what I mean? Like, come on. Come on. Tomorrow's, what is it, Memorial Day, Labor Day? I can't remember, which I think defeats the purpose of the holiday, which, oops, sorry. Oh, there goes my, any other credible fan base I had is uh, military or in the labor industry. Sorry about that, guys. I didn't mean to be insulting. Um, again, there's a reason that your boy Matt Danger here is not on a famous cooking show. And it's because he don't take no shit from no one. No shit. Wait, when, while you wait, you should make me a martini? Diego, you missed me make the martini. I'm out of gin. I do have some, I don't think I have any vodka. I do have I'll make a daiquiri, or I can make a, uh, uh, what else do I have? Oh, I have, um, I do ha still have some rum, I think. I don't know if Elida took it. Oh, yeah, I got some rum. I can make a mojito. I'm going to show you how to make a mojito. Dude, party foul. I can show you guys how to make a mojito. I got fresh mint outside. I think that's what I'll do next, because I do feel like a mojito today. So we'll do that. Cleaning up, just getting this countertop. That's the bad thing about making pizza, y'all, is that it can be a little bit messy. You know, just like, but anything you're doing that's real fun is always just a little bit messy, you know what I mean? Mojito time, all right, brother. Now, last time I made one, it didn't come out so good because the guy wasn't clear on the instructions on how to make it, which I was a little disappointed on. But I think I know what I did wrong. So, ideally... I think what he did and what I didn't do was that you take the lime and you muddle it with the mint and the ice, or not the ice, but the sugar. And that's the key to making it taste like that classic mojito flavor. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to run right outside, grab some mint from the garden, uh, and then I'll be back and I'll show you guys how to make that in one second. All right, mint time, mint time, mint time, mint time. Mint time is what they should put. They should put that on a t-shirt. You guys might be wondering, where did he go? Why is it just a blank screen? I'm still here. And I'll be right back. I'm going to go get that mint right now. As promised, the prodigal son has returned with the fresh mint. There it is, y'all. Wait while he's out of the suction. <laughs> Mr. Chance, brother. All right, so we got our mint. We're going to give it a good rinse. We don't want our mint to be covered in dirt and other things. Now we're going to take it. We're going to peel it away from the stems. This is spearmint. I think traditionally a broad mint, a broad leaf mint is used in mojito, but I've got spearmint. I think I do have some broad leaf mint in there somewhere, but this mint will work as well. It is mint. 
as you can see. It's also good if you don't have any gum, just carry a little piece of mint from the garden around in your pocket. And it actually grows really well in this area too. So if you're in my area, that's a good thing to have. All right, we've got our mint here. I'm gonna keep it well away from the basil because we don't want our basil to taste minty. And actually we don't want our <clears throat> mint to taste tomatoey. So fortunately I've already filled on that. One. But that was the mar mar martini talking. Here we go. We got our mint separated. <clears throat> We've got our glass here. I'm just gonna give it a little rinse. Make sure the glass we're working with right here is nice and clean. We're gonna muddle the mint with the sugar, with the lime. Once we're done with that, we're gonna throw it on ice, give it a shake with the uh, spirit, and then we'll make our mojito. But first, in order to make the mojito, we gotta finish the first drink. Oh. No, y'all. I'm not bragging. I'm just saying. Would you leave a guy who can make you a pizza and a mojito? Come on. All right. Got about two tablespoons of sugar in there. It's a little bit much, but that's okay. You know, we're playing. We're playing the game today. We're playing the game. Now. Part I think I missed was this part, which is where I take the lime. <coughs> Excuse me while I choke to death here on a piece of. Uh, now I'm going to take this half of the lime, going to separate it from the lime peel here, throw it in there, muddle it together, <coughs> add our spirit, pour our mojito. Lengthwise, now that we've got <coughs> the, the front separated, and we'll just ch 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 cut right along there, get some of that mint, uh, lime flesh in there. If we really want this to be strong, oh, that's what I'm talking about. Yes, all right, I dude, mason jars. I swear to god, I didn't know. But it is like the perfect fucking tool if you don't have a real, um, <clears throat> if you don't have like a shaker or like a bartender, any bartending tools. <clears throat> I mean, it doesn't do good with straining stuff over sugar and whatever, but I'll tell you, this thing has made me so many drinks and it's so easy. <clears throat> it's definitely a good backup tool if you don't want to invest in like the bartender stuff. Because it, and it even, some of them have, this one doesn't, but. They'll have measurements on it so you can like measure how many ounces is in there. <clears throat> if you want to get technical. Now today we're not getting technical. Today we're eyeballing the shit out of this. Alright, I'm gonna rinse this off. <clears throat> and this has to be rinsed off well because I don't want my mojito tasting like uh, a pizza. Alright, we've got this mixed up. Now we've got our mojito stuff in there, and we're gonna muddle it. Now you might be asking yourself, Matt Danger, you're not muddling it, you're just fucking crushing it with a wooden spoon. Well, I'll tell you what, Dread, desperate times calls for dread, desperate measures. Yeah, I'm putting them in the, I'm mushing them right now, brother. See, mushing them. Mushing the shit out of them. Oh, and it smells wonderful. It smells like a mojito. You know, the spearmint is a little smaller, so you've gotta really, work it to get that mint activated, get the, those cell walls broken down, get that science working. Yeah. Now, don't worry, I didn't forget about our pizza. It's in the fridge. And before we finish the mojito, I'm going to take that out. Pizza's nice and forms now, nice and sturdy. Okay, it's got some, it's got its shape. Now we're just going to come underneath the crust here, make sure that our pizza isn't stuck to the crust because we want to transfer it over to the pizza stone. 
without any issues, and I don't happen to have one of them pizza boys. You know, like them flat pizza boys. You know what I'm talking about? Of course you know what I'm talking about. <clears throat> you know which one. But you know, the big pizza thing. The thing that, like, stops the pizza from doing stupid shit. All right, here we go. Here's the moment of truth. We're going to try to transfer this over to a hot pizza stone without a pizza thing. If I fuck it up, may the Lord have mercy on my soul. <clears throat> We're going to try to get it started with... First, let's see if I can... Let's, okay, we're almost there. I just need to give it a shake, make sure it's, it's wiggling. It's wiggling. This side needs a little more flour. Let's close this so it's not burning. <clears throat> no, I've never... Oh, this mojito's going to be better. Okay, there we go. That's better. I've just uh, helped to lube this guy up a little bit more, so it's gonna transfer over, hopefully nicely. And I'm just gonna... Oh, it did it! It did it, y'all! It fucking slid off! It slid right onto the thing. Perfect. I couldn't have planned that better. <clears throat> All right. We're gonna give our pan a rinse, so it's not covered <clears throat> in flour anymore. Dry it off, and we'll be ready when it's pizza time. We'll just stick it right back in there, grab it right off the stone, or we can take the stone out, let it air dry. <clears throat> oh my god, y'all, that pizza smells so fucking good. Oh, oh, I'll tell you, if these, if you Facebook Live videos had smell of vision, I'd never be single again in my life. All right, here we go. We're crushing, we're muddling. Alright, we've got our mint activated, we've got our juices here, we've got our mojito ready. We're going to take our rum. Now technically a mojito is two ounces of rum, I believe, for the amount of mix that you make. I just eyeballed it. I'm going to give it a shake, put some ice in this cup first. I'm going to do crushed ice. Crushed ice. Crushed ice. Now, you can throw some ice in here, shake it up. I'll put one cube in. Oh, I've got one cube of ice in there. We're going to use that just to help cool off that, that spirit a little bit. Let's give it a good shake. All right, put the top on. Got our jar. Yeah, give it a nice shake just to cool. Cool the liquor a little bit, and we can transfer them right in here. Oh my god. Oh, y'all. That is a perfect mojito. Look at that fucking thing. Look at that. Y'all. <clears throat> and to perf you know, this is this is not something that uh this is not something that a lot of people do or that everybody does, but just a little bit of club soda, give it that little fizz that you might get in like a bar mojito. <clears throat> Classic. Oh, guys. All right. We're going to give it a oh, Can I just give it a little stir? Pour it apart. A little stir. Let's taste it. Holy fucking shit, y'all. That is a fucking mojito. That is not a joke. That is a real mojito, like legit, through and through. Elida, I wish you could have this one instead of the one I made. Last night, because this is a lot better. A lot better. That is what a mojito should taste like. So the key is, make sure you have that lime in there when you muddle everything. It makes the difference, for real. All right, y'all. I forgot to set my timer on the pizza. It's on a pizza stone, so it's just gonna cook a little faster than normal. We're gonna set a timer. We're gonna say seven minutes. It's been in there for probably about two minutes or so. We're going to keep an eye on it, make sure that it's cooking okay. Then we're going to take it out, transfer it from the stone back onto this pizza shita. And oh boy, we're going to toss some of this leftover basil right here on top. And let me tell you, that'll be it, y'all. I'm going to be fat for the rest of my life because we got a fresh goddamn pizza right in this oven.
Now, I'm going to open the floor up again while we wait for this pizza together. I'm going to ask you guys any questions you might have for me, pizza related. No, I want no fucking flop on that pizza. I'm counting on I hope so, Diego. I'm planning on it. I might just leave it on the stone, honestly, because I'm worried that I would ruin it in the final transfer. But by the time it's done, you know, I think it'll be okay. It was pretty well <clears throat> floured on the bottom, so not too concerned. But it would be a fucking huge pain in the dick to have a pizza come out of the oven after all this work and be ruined just because I transferred it over to the sheet. We'll see. We will see. <clears throat> I can't believe this mojito came out so good. That's the real, real uh, life lesson here. This should have been making a mojito with Matt Danger. So you did play mm. the They got destroyed. Mm. They accidentally put the weird God they got damn. I'll tell you guys, fresh mint in a mojito is... It's just... Mm, it's just... Hold on, let me get the right angle. Mm. Now, you can use a knife if you got one. I happen to have a pizza roller today. And we're going to use it. I appreciate you three people who are sticking with me watching this. You guys are the best. I hope you guys have picked up some tips on your own pizza and mojito making and martini making. I'll tell you, that mason jar, they're so cheap at the store, too. They're like, you can buy a whole box of them for like, what, maybe uh, five bucks at the most. <clears throat> And they are perfect for mixing drinks. Like, they are legit. You can get them with measurements on them. You know? It's like super, super convenient if you don't have, like, a, you know, a cocktail shaker. So, enjoy these. Uh, hopefully these tips help. I made a mojito last night, and it was not as good as this one for sure. Oh. Cocktail shaker set you probably can get for like, I don't know, probably like 20 bucks, I would assume. But uh, mason jars, $5 for a whole box. Psh, you know how many drinks you can make with a mason jar full of, a box full of mason jars? It's a lot of mason. I mean, a lot of drinks, a lot of mason. I'm going to add just a little bit more rum to this. Yeah, dude, that mason jar trick, I'll tell you. You're in a pinch and you're trying to make yourself a solid drink. 100% way to go. Super easy. And they're real easy to clean. Dishwasher safe, you know. And they're clear so you can... And it's glass also so you can... Oh, you want to hear a story, Diego? <laughs> oh, yeah. Let me tell you what. Um, let me think. Oh, God, I got stories, but I can't think of one off the top of my head. Okay, here we go. I think, I'm, who's watching right now? I think it's just the guys that I know, really. It's just Elida and Diego and <clears throat> Blake. So this lady I was seeing the other day, this bitch is crazy. Now, I'm crazy, but she is real crazy. Like, like I don't want to talk too much about her personal information because I don't know if, uh, who's going to be watching this in the future since uh, yeah, it's got helpful pizza tips. But I'll just say... <clears throat> I was looking at some of my behaviors this week, and I was just, there's plenty to choose from. Uh, I was looking at some of my behaviors this week, and I was just like, holy shit, dude, I am literally fucking batshit crazy. Like, I, <laughs> I should not, should not be allowed to be in a relationship. I asked this girl after a week to move in with me in my house. Like, <laughs> this is fucking crazy. And, I don't know, I just, shit is insane. Um... Let me think of an actual story story. Last, last time I went to the bar, how about that? That's a good story, since everybody's waiting to get back into the bar. Went from three to six, they wanted to hear the, they wanted to hear the, uh, the, the, the juicy details, I'm sure. All right, we've got about another two minutes checking in our pizza. Oh my God, y'all, that pizza looks incredible. Woo! Uh, just needs time. We want that crust to be nice and crisp. You know what I mean? Don't want no soggy crust. 
Now, I don't know if a raw pizza dough going in there is better or not. I just found, when I used to work at a pizza place, um, pizza place, when I was a fry cook, we would make pizzas. They were pre-frozen. You'd throw them right in the oven at like 450, 475. It was a high, you know, a pizza oven, so it cooked very high temperature, very close to the pizza. And they always came out better when they were frozen versus thawed. So that's what I do. Um, last time I was at the bar. <clears throat> so actually, Blake, ironically, it was at Corleone's, which is where I met Blake. And I got kicked out. Got kicked out of Corleone's. And it was my 100% my fault. I actually have to, uh, I was hoping when they reopen, I'm going to try to send an apology because I, I don't know if I'm allowed back in there. Um, so I get there. There's supposed to be karaoke, you know. And of course, so I'm excited. You know, I drive all the way over there. It's like a 40 minute, 45 minute drive for me. Get out there. Karaoke's canceled. So I'm like, well, what the fuck, dude? Like, you guys could have posted about it on your page or something. I just drove 45 minutes to get here. Derek, the bartender, of course, is like, yeah, I mean, well, if we posted about it, nobody would show up. Okay, fine. So, oh, it's Ka Katie. Uh, Catherine would love to hear about my, um, I bet you would love to hear about my what my woes from this week. Weekend, I should say. The week was great. Weekend, not so great. I feel like I'm taking things too seriously and it's driving me crazy. Oh, Lindsay mentioned it. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't good. It wasn't good. Like, I was just... The thing is, I just got way too drunk. That's what happened. It was... I mean, it's pretty simple. It was just, um... I was... Oh, wow. Burst of hot air. You don't want that in your face. It's cooking, though. We're getting there. Um, I just, um... I fucking... I was like, well, there's no karaoke, so I guess I'm just gonna get fucking shit-faced. So I drank more than I have in a long time, and I just drank and drank and drank. And for like the first part of the night, guys, I was doing good. I was flirting with these cute girls. There was like these, uh, I don't know, they were between Generation Z millennials, like 21 year old, like fresh out of, fresh 21. And um, I'm checking the pizza, Diego. We don't want our pizza to burn. No, I'm fresh out of, um, I'm trying to, Spend fucking five minutes. Shut up. So, I'm talking to these girls. I'm doing real good. You know, we're chatting. We're having a good time. I'm being charming and witty and all the things that I would love to be, you know, when I'm talking to somebody for the first time. And it's just going great. Now, I go sit over at the bar, order another drink. There's a Spanish guy sitting next to me and we start chatting about something. I can't remember what. And for some reason, it comes up in conversation just like colloquial addressing other people. I'm like... Yeah, so what would you call me in Spanish if we're friends, like you're addressing me? Because we were talking about, you know, just like kind of greetings and stuff. And he calls me puta, puta. And I was like, I was like, uh, you wouldn't call me that. And he was like, no, yeah, yeah, you know, we're friends, they call you puta. And I was like, okay. And he just called me a bitch to my face. Now he's an older Spanish guy, you know, he's, I know. Older Spanish guy, you know, I was trying to give him the benefit of the doubt. However, that's mad danger, giving him the benefit of the doubt. Gaff Muruhu, on the other hand, is a completely different person. And yeah, I'll tell you what, he didn't take kindly to that. So anyway, night goes well. I talk to these girls. Things are going okay with us. They end up leaving early. I end up, you know, sitting back at the bar. This guy's there. That's pretty much exactly what I did, Diego. I fucking grabbed him by the shoulder, pulled him off from the bar, threw him across the room. He falls down, of course, because he's drunk. I go to pick him up, and uh, he doesn't want to be picked up by me. Uh, like, pick him up, like, give offering a hand, because he's upset. So after that, that was my fault. I got kicked out. I felt bad about it. I sent an apology to, <clears throat> to, um, to Derek, who was there. And I was going to wait. He asked me, to, well, he said that I should wait a few months to get back to them. So once they reopen, if they reopen... I'll try to send a message and see if I can smooth the waters because that is one of my favorite bars. It's just a really cool place. I like to support them and stuff. So it's not their fault. Definitely my fault. But yeah, I'm about just fucking crazy, man. I just, <laughs> shit's crazy right now. I don't know. It's like my fucking, like this week, he did, he did deserve, he's, he called me a puta. And I don't know if that's like, you know, I'm not Spanish. So I don't know if friends who are Spanish call each other puta. But I was like, this nigga just called me a fucking bitch to my face. 
Like, who does, who does he think he's talking to? So, whatever. All right, y'all. Pizza's getting there. Oh, my God. Oh, my fucking God. I'm going to give leave it in there for another, like, two or three minutes. But the, the fucking cheese... I can show you guys, right? I can show you. Look at this. Look at this shit. That fucking cheese is bubbling. Crust is crisping. Oh, my God, guys. Guys. Oh, my God. I just really need to... Yeah, man, I, you know, I'll tell you what, though. I've saved probably about $500 in the last two months that I haven't been at the bar. So, I mean, I've spent it all on other things, so it's not saved. But I, I have saved some money. So, pizza has got like another two minutes and we'll be done. Ah, oh, man, this pizza's going to be good, y'all. I'm glad you stuck around for the reveal because it's just kind of, I know, I can see it. It's just, damn, that looks good. You ever make something so good, you're just like, did I really make this? I've been having that happen a lot lately, not to brag, but I'm just like, holy shit, dude. All, like, why am I, <laughs> like, I'm wondering why I gain weight sometimes, and I'm like, oh, yeah, it's because I'm making this shit at, like, professional level. Singing Lamb of God. Oh yeah, yeah, that was uh, that was a fun day too. All right, guys, a few more minutes. Yo, this is a really, really good mojito. Save this video to your list if you're trying to make a mojito at home and you got some fresh mint. I mean, any mint will do. But this thing is fucking on point. I thought I put too much sugar in. You're supposed to use like a standard sugar cube. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, uh, <laughs> I got too many bad drunk stories. I've been trying to be better, too. Like, that was the first time I got drunk in a long time for that reason, because I keep getting into fights and getting into trouble. I don't want to be banned from a bunch of bars, you know? That, and now I have a fucking career and shit, so it's like, whoa, don't ruin your fucking career over a bar fight. I don't know. I don't know about all that noise, y'all, but how are we doing? All right, I think we're ready, y'all. I think I want to give it just, like, I like my crust to be real crisp, and it's not burning on top, which is the most important part. So that'll also help when what I just showed you, putting it in the fridge or the freezer for, like, five minutes before. It'll help cool the cheese down so that when you put it in there, cheese doesn't get all, like, super burnt on top, and it'll cook perfectly with everything else. I wish this had more viewers because y'all could use some of these tips. I see some of the pizzas that people make and they just look like trash. Not to, sorry, I just pointed out what I, call it like a season. And this pizza you're gonna see. Oh, this pizza. Slayer Lamb of God, oh yeah. That was fun day. Too bad we didn't get to see more of a monomar. Only reason we were so drunk is we were at the <laughs> we were at the uh, the bar beforehand, saying, "Oh yeah, this is this is in uh, Hartford. This is the the wrong venue. It was the Comcast in in Massachusetts, so we had to like rush over there to go see the show. We made it there in time, but we did miss a good part of the Montemar set. All right, y'all, pizza's done. I'm ready. So first, I'm gonna pull it out, put it on my uh, my cooling tray here top of it to basil, then we'll transfer it over to the pizza tray. I don't even know if we really need to transfer it over to the pizza tray, to be honest. Because it's just for me. I ain't taking it and serving it to no one. I'll just leave it right here. Just gonna make some room, make sure we got... This is a pretty big tray, so I'm gonna make sure it fits on here properly. And it is gonna be fucking hot. American cigarette story. <laughs> First time we hung out with Diego at my house. We're hanging out with my cousin Brandon, who's a fucking big time pothead. Oh, guys. Oh my god. Guys, can you see this? Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Let's get this is an important part. Oh my god. This fucking pizza, guys, this pizza. Guys, hold on, hold on a second. This needs to be 
Look at this. Y'all, look at this fucking pizza. Holy shit, dude. I mean, okay, it's not perfectly round, but look at it. All right, back to the story. We're hanging out with Diego. Diego's still fresh off the boat, you know. He's not speaking English the best that he's ever spoken it. So we're hanging out with Brandon. Brandon tells us, oh, we're putting the fresh basil on, by the way. Fucking Brandon says, yeah, yeah, I got, I've got, uh, he's got his pot with him. And he's like, hey, you want to take a hit off this? And Diego's like, it lo- the way it was rolled, it looked like a, a cigarette. And Diego's like, oh, is that a cigarette? <laughs> Brandon says, yeah, 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 yeah. It's a, it's a fucking, uh, it's American cigarette. Diego takes a big, big hit on it. And he's like, oh, <laughs> he fucking gets high as shit on this American cigarette. Guys, oh, oh, I get, you got to see this. You just got to look at it. Just look at it for a second. The cheese is bubbling. Look how well the cheese spread out too. I'm really impressed because the cheese, you know, we remember we put it on in blocks and it really like filled. It really did it. Those tomatoes are perfect. Look, they don't, they're not burnt. They're not juicy. They're not making anything wet. They're just, oh. And I am going to transfer it over because I just realized I don't want to, um, I don't want to have to clean the pizza stone. It's more work. So we're going to, I'm going to put this down for one second. Oh, actually, you know what I should do? Bro, one bite. Everybody knows the rules. Well, hold on, hold on. Let me put this back up here. take our oh my god oh holy shit that's hot <laughs> that's hot it's very very hot dude this pizza stone is not uh it's no joke that thing really fucking cooks well and it is incredibly incredibly hot Guys, I wish you could smell this pizza. It just, oh, it is perfect. It is perfect. Don't touch this. It is very hot <laughs> for future reference. Like I burnt my finger, I think. I just one of my guitar and fingers. All right, here we go. We're gonna cut our pizza. We're gonna leave it right on top of it. Actually, is this stable? I don't know if it's stable enough. Oh, we'll just take it off. That's fine. Oops. Put it right here. We're gonna cut our pizza, y'all. Just, can you see it? Okay, good. Just, oh, oh, yes. Oh, the bottom is crispy. Oh, my God. It's like a fucking New Haven style pizza. The crust isn't quite as thin because I didn't like, you know, pound it out extra thin. But oh, my fucking God, y'all. Oh. Holy shit. Holy shit. That's it, y'all. Game over. I'm going to go gain about 400 pounds. Uh, wow. Cheers. Our fresh mojito. Our fresh goddamn margarita pizza. Here we go. First slice. Oh my god. Oh, please don't. Please don't even. Yes. Oh, hold on. Oh, yes. Yo, look at that. Look how firm the crust is. Yo, that shit is like. Yo, I don't, I don't think I can keep this video going. I just got to go eat this right now. Anyway, this has been, it's really hot to you though. I can't take a bite. It's just like, it'll burn the shit out of my mouth right now. But this has been how to make a perfect pizza with Matt Danger. I also threw in how to make a mar, uh, martini in a jar and a mojito in a jar. And uh, share this video if you liked it. And uh, cheers to you guys. Hopefully nobody who hears any of these stories will judge me too much because I think we've all been drunk and done something stupid at one point. So cheers. I'm going to go drink the, eat the shit out of this and drink the shit out of that.